The anime begins with Detective Amamiya ordering Detective Totomaru Isiki to take a break, which surprises Toto. Amamiya firmly states that Toto is hindering their work, causing other detectives to laugh. To stay in the General Investigation Division, Kiku suggests Toto seek help from Ron Kamonohasi. However, Ron rejects him at first. Toto then reveals Kiku's involvement, prompting Ron to open his door, looking different from his photo, which surprises Toto. Inside, Ron is casually sleeping on a soft floor, astonishing Toto. Ron then explains that the soft floor symbolizes laziness and boredom. As Toto tries to explain his visit's purpose, Ron doesn't give him a chance to speak, leaving Toto unsure how to handle them. Suddenly, a call from Amamiya prompts Toto to investigate a new death case nearby. Ron overhears, and his detective instincts kick in. Despite his illness hindering his work, Ron loves being a detective, but is hesitant to stay in the police world. Toto believes he can help Ron with this problem, eventually convincing him to go to the scene. Upon reaching the location, Toto and the police are surprised to find Ron lying down and conversing with the corpse. Remarkably, Ron determines that the cause of death was drowning, which amazed Toto and his companions. Toto then reveals that all the victims were men from wealthy families who had received invitations to attend reunions, weddings, dates, and dinners, but were not seen attending. Moreover, there were no bodies of water at the supposed locations they were headed to. However, Ron knows where the men drowned. He then leads Toto to the murderer's location. To support the investigation, Ron advises Toto to dress like a wealthy young man. Following Ron's instructions, Toto engages Levy, the barber, in a discussion about investments, catching Levy's interest. Suddenly, Toto falls asleep, which pleases Levy. Levy then submerges Toto's face in the sink. Shortly after, Ron enters and catches Levy in the act, while Toto wakes up. Ron had instructed Toto to hold his breath for a minute to avoid inhaling carbon gas in the sink. The sink with minimal oxygen and hot water poured in produced carbon dioxide, causing Levy's victims to faint without resistance. At that moment, Levy plunges the victim's face into the water-filled sink. Additionally, considering that victims often visit the barber for events like reunions, Levy takes advantage of his barber shops, does not require reservations policy, to freely commit murders. With no inhibition to kill, Levy attempts to flee but finds his escape route blocked by Ron. Levy then confesses that his massacre stemmed from heartbreak over stock losses and feeling manipulated by the wealthy. Ron's illness suddenly resurfaces, but Levy becomes hypnotized by Ron's gaze, obeying his command to jump. In a panic, Toto swiftly restrains Levy from acting on the command. Upon realizing the culprit is still alive, Toto feels relieved and promptly rescues Ron and others in danger of falling. Ron then expresses gratitude to Toto for averting disaster. Following this, Toto discovers that Ron's mental illness allows him to manipulate culprits to do the unthinkable. Ron then sees potential in their partnership, valuing Toto's innocence and lack of concern for personal safety in preventing such incidents from occurring. Ron then asks Toto to bring all the cases to him, with Ron acting as the brains behind the operations. Ron also tells Toto that he will become a skilled detective from now on, leaving Toto stunned by Ron's words. Shortly after, Ron is delighted when Toto visits his house, where Toto tells Ron about the garbage division investigation he handled, involving missing money from a piggy bank. Ron then changes into a disguise, surprising Toto. Investigating cases that other detectives avoid brings Ron an incredibly enjoyable sensation. Soon after, Ron and his friends arrive at the complainant's house, where they are welcomed by a woman named Hikari. Ron enters, holding a suitcase he claims is a piggy bank, surprising Toto and Hikari. After that, Ron examines the yellow piggy bank reported by Hikari, noticing that although it's intact, the coins inside keep decreasing. Shortly after, Hikari's older sister, Chihiro, returns home and admits she just came back from her hometown. Then Chihiro explains that when she returned home, Hikari informed her that the money in her piggy bank had been stolen. However, according to Chihiro, Hikari only lost her feelings. Upon hearing this, Hikari reacts immediately, stating that the piggy bank should be as heavy as an iron ornament, not as light as it is. These are the words Ron has been waiting to hear from her. Ron then asks for the piggy bank to be broken but the coins must not be touched as they need to be checked for fingerprints. He then excuses himself for a walk. Later, Ron and Toto meet at the scene where a man named Yagami died. Toto then informs Ron of the forensic results, indicating that only Chihiro's fingerprints are found on the coin. 
At the same time, Amamiya is surprised to see Toto's gang at the scene, and Ron immediately lies down to talks with the corpse, astonishing everyone. Ron then declares that the culprit has been found and asks Toto to explain the sequence of events. After that, Toto gathers Hikari and Chihiro at the scene, and under Ron's direction, he tells them that the murderer of Yagami is Chihiro. Everyone is shocked by the accusation. Chihiro denies it, but Toto explains the deduction connecting the piggy bank to the murder. According to Toto's deduction, Yagami followed Chihiro to the house and stalked Hikari's piggy bank. Chihiro, realizing the potential weapon, swapped it with a new one and inserted some coins, staining them with Yagami's blood. This explains why only Chihiro's fingerprints were found on the coin. To dispose of the body, Chihiro placed it in a suitcase. Unable to deny it any longer, Chihiro confesses to her actions. Where Hikari is saddened by her sister's involvement in a murder case. Toto explains that Chihiro killed Yagami to protect herself, but hiding the body is still illegal. After revealing the truth, Ron's illness resurfaces, and he instructs Chihiro to jump into the river. Toto panics when Ron does this. Meanwhile, Amamiya is fascinated by Ron, whom she finds cool. She tries to stop Chihiro from jumping, but Chihiro, possessed by his power, breaks free and drowns in the strong river current. Finally, Toto intervenes to save Chihiro. Realizing that Chihiro is alive, Ron is relieved and thanks Toto. Meanwhile, at Blue Academy, the leaders receive word that Ron has returned to Japan as a detective. However, before Ron takes on any case, the culprits typically disappear. It's Blue's responsibility to keep an eye on their former student. So, they send an envoy to secretly watch over Ron. At the same time, Toto receives an urgent call from Ron, prompting Toto hurries to meet his friend. As it turns out, Toto is called only to settle Ron's shopping bill. Since it's a special day, Ron gets to participate in a lottery. Luckily, Ron wins the grand prize for an onsen trip. However, the prize is for couples, so Ron insists on bringing Toto along, or else the prize will be forfeited. After that, the two then head to the onsen after making a reservation. Upon arrival, they are surprised to find the onsen building in a dilapidated condition. Shortly after, they are greeted by the innkeepers, one of whom is a blue envoy who intentionally took the job to monitor Ron. During dinner, instead of the usual relaxation, Ron suggests playing Monopoly. Once again, Toto is taken aback by his friend's playful behavior. Because Ron managed to bring the Monopoly game along. Since it was dinner time, Toto apologized to the guests. After dinner, they played table tennis, but the ball accidentally went into the river. Ron and Toto had to search for it, leaving them shivering from the cold. To warm up, they then soaked in the onsen. Shortly after, Amamiya mistakenly thought Toto was in the women's onsen and barged into the men's onsen. Surprised to see Ron in that situation, Amamiya was deeply shocked. In her embarrassment, she complained about Toto being in the women's onsen and expressed confusion about Ron's presence there too. In a drunken and tearful state, Amamiya intervened in a quarrel between a married couple considering divorce. Her intervention made the wife realize her mistake, leading to an apology to her husband. To calm herself, the wife named Sachiko decided to soak in the onsen. Feeling embarrassed, Amamiya chose to go to bed early. Later, Ron found an opportunity to invite the guests to play Monopoly again, and Toto was once again surprised wondering where Ron got the Monopoly set from. After that, Toto joined the other guests playing Monopoly. He seemed to have luck on his side, as he kept getting fortunate breaks in the game. As I fell, everyone decided it was time to sleep, while members of Blue were seen keeping watch over Ron and his friends. The next morning, everyone is shocked to find out that Sachiko has died. Everyone gathered at the scene, and Amamiya estimated the time of death to be between midnight and 4 a.m. As usual, Ron performed his ritual of conversing with the corpse before solving the case. He then asked Toto to investigate the alibis of the guests. A member of Blue suggested that Amamiya was the first to leave the dining room around the estimated time of death, leading some to accuse her of being the murderer. However, Toto didn't believe it, and Ron assured everyone of Amamiya's innocence. Ron then decided to prove Amamiya's innocence in Sachiko's death. Asasuki mentioned that he witnessed a strange event when he went back to his room, he saw smoke near the women's bathhouse. It turned out that the inn staff deliberately didn't inform the guests about the Bainizome legend, fearing it might disturb them. Since Amamiya had been associating the death with the legend, which involves a woman with maple leaf sprinkles, it was clear that she was not familiar with it. 
not having received a brochure about the legend because she didn't take a taxi to the inn. Amamiya couldn't have committed a murder inspired by maple leaves if she didn't know about the legend in the first place. In conversations guided by Ron's explanations, he cleverly incorporates Toto's name, making it seem like Toto deduced the findings instead of Ron. This tactic led Amamiya and her friends to believe it was Toto who was leading the deductions, which also angered Blues and Voy. Afterwards, Ron's attention shifted to the tennis ball they had dropped during their table tennis game. Toto felt a bit annoyed that Ron was now discussing the ball instead. Ron then redirected his focus to the mat in the bathhouse, noting the presence of two rain gutters. During this discussion, Amamiya had expressed her gratitude to Toto for clearing her of suspicion. However, her voice seemed laden with reluctance, as if she wasn't entirely willing to thank him. Since Amamiya was under suspicion, she couldn't take the lead in the investigation, hence relying on Toto, who was assigned to the task. At that moment, Amamiya expressed her dismay at mistakenly entering the bathhouse and being falsely accused. Upon hearing this, Ron smiled subtly, appreciating Amamiya's contribution to the case. Amamiya was so impressed by Ron's face that she fainted from admiration. Shortly after, the local police arrived, and Toto collaborated with them to investigate Sachiko's death. Meanwhile, Blues and Void speeds trailed Ron. As Toto entered the room, Ron pretended to spot a centipede causing a loud noise that prevented Speets from eavesdropping. Toto then informed that the police suspected Sachiko's death to be due to a heart attack, and her husband Ichigo admitted to her heart condition. Based on this, Ron deduced the identity of Sachiko's murderer and handed over his findings to Toto. Afterwards, Toto gathered everyone and accused Ichigo of Sachiko's death, stunning everyone. Ichigo denied it, but Toto explained how he used the mat by the pool to kill her which was found at the scene. Ichigo believed no one would enter the women's bathhouse, so he used the mat to commit the crime. Ichigo then switched the bath curtains to cover his tracks. However, Toto and Ron were already in the men's bath before the switch. When Amamiya entered the bath labeled women, Toto and Ron were still in the onsen, arousing suspicion. Unable to deny it, Ichigo confessed. It was revealed he was having an affair with Asasuki, who felt disturbed by Sachiko. Asasuki refused to be dragged in Ro Ichigo's crime. Toto scolded Ichigo for his actions, showing no remorse. Meanwhile, Toto searched for Ron and was approached by Speeds, who disguised himself as an inn employee. At that moment, Toto was forced to admit that his deductions were based on Ron's observations, not his own. However, Ron insisted it was Toto's own thinking. Speeds then threatened to report Ron for doing detective work, potentially leading to his death sentence. However, Speets promised not to report it if Toto confessed. Ron, however, saw through Speets's true intention, realizing he wanted Ron's help in solving his family's murder. Speets admitted to this, acknowledging Ron's reputation for solving cases. While Ron didn't fully accept Speets's request, he considered it due to Toto's belief in Speets's goodness. Speets then promised to assist in the investigation of the case Ron wanted to handle and left, impressing Toto with his skills. After that, Ron mentioned they might need Speets' help in future cases, but remained wary of him, continuing to monitor him. Later, Amamiya informed them of serial murders in Aichi Prefecture, assigned to be handled by Omido Kawasani, an eagle-eyed detective. Since Kawasani would be stationed in their area, Amamiya assigned Toto to work with him. However, Toto was not given the chance to obtain any information. Amid Toto's confusion, Ron appeared disguised as a puppeteer startling Toto with his unusual behavior. Toto then forcefully brought Kawasami's assistant, Yamane, to provide information. After that, Yamane revealed that they had caught the serial killer named Yeager, but he managed to escape, though Kawasami believed it wasn't actually Yeager since Yeager died without hands, so it was certain that the real killer was someone else. Upon hearing this, Ron smiled and began acting strangely while examining the corpse. He struggled to release a doll from his hand and asked for Toto's help. When the sheath came off, Toto was thrown back, accidentally hitting Yamane, while Kawasani managed to dodge. Based on Kawasani's ability to dodge, it was impossible for the culprit to escape, especially since Kawasani had skillful movements. So Ron concluded on behalf of Toto that Kawasani lied about the culprit escaping when they caught him. Kawasani confirmed this, admitting it was to cover up Yamane's mistake. Suddenly, Yamane panicked when he realized he lost a button on his shirt sleeve which was found on the doll held by Ron. Observing Yamane's panic, Ron smiled, 
realizing he had made a breakthrough. To confirm that Yeager was the hand collector, Ron connected Speets with Kawa Sami and his team. Speets then recounted his visit to Yeager's house, where he found evidence of collected hands. When Toto tried to explain who Speets was to Kawa Sami, Ron intervened, intentionally distracting with brown sugar as he aimed to conclude the investigation. Before leaving, Ron hinted that Toto would reveal the truth about Yeager's death after cleaning up. While in the bathroom, Ron explained the deduction behind the serial murders committed by the hand collector. Upon returning, Toto confirmed that Yeager was indeed the serial killer, and that the hands were deliberately removed from the corpse to mislead investigators. Kawasemi then asked why someone would copy Yeager's killing method. Toto explained that Yeager hadn't been murdered, but he did the unthinkable due to feeling dishonored. Yeager harmed himself until his shirt was bloody. To make it appear as murder, someone removed Yeager's clothes and hid them, making it seem like he'd been killed. Feeling he'd lost his honor as a police, Yamane fabricated the story about letting Yeager escape. Kawasemi realized Yeager should have been dead when they found him. Yamane confessed Yeager had indeed escaped. To divert blame from the corpse, Yamane boldly cut off Yeager's hand, shocking Kawasemi. Toto suggested that Yamane's longing for perfection triggered his actions, especially after losing his handcuffs. Yamane then tearfully admitted his fault and Kawasane recognized his actions stemmed from the perfection he demanded, willing to rehire him after his sentence. Yamane was deeply moved and Kawasane acknowledged Ron's crucial role in solving the case, calling him and Toto true partners. Toto agreed that Ron greatly relied on him due to his tendency to lose control, but not with this case. Ron casually explained it's because Yamane didn't mean to kill anyone and Toto is shocked by this revelation. The next day, Toto went to see Ron, hoping to invite him on a vacation to Nundun Island, which had a planetarium. However, before Toto could show him the invitation, Ron was engrossed in his favorite TV show. Among the guests were a famous esper named Turage and a brilliant doctor named Mofu. Turage aimed to demonstrate esper abilities and chose a human subject for the experiment. One of the participants was named Balaj. The purpose of Tauragay's experiment was to control Lelouch's brain through writing embedded in paper. Torage then commanded Lelouch to jump and run using written instructions on paper, which Lelouch obediently followed. However, Mofu doubted the experiment and suspected Lelouch was Torage's accomplice. Torage threatened to order Lelouch to die as proof of his abilities. When the word death was written, Lelouch lost consciousness causing the live broadcast to be cut off. Upon learning of this, Ron and Toto decided to visit the TV station. Upon reaching the scene, Toto started sharing information with the police officers. Meanwhile, Ron presented himself as a fan of Torage, which didn't sit well with Torage. Later, they met Mofu. Distressed by Lelouch's death, Mofu revealed that poison was discovered in the victim's body. Despite performing heart restitution on Lelouch, he experienced increased pain and eventually stopped breathing. Ron then noticed needle marks on Lelouch's neck, which raising suspicions on how the needle was injected as Torage didn't make any suspicious movements. At that moment, Ron confessed his admiration for Torage, surprising Mofu and Toto. Ron clarified that Toto, being naive, would uncover the truth behind Lelouch's death, not due to esper abilities but murder. To demonstrate, Toto then role-played as Torage, and Mofu as Lelouch. Initially dismissed, the audience was amazed when Toto showed the reversed riding death, which appeared as sleep to Lelouch, causing him to briefly fall asleep. As the crowd gathered, Torage took the opportunity to inject poison into Lelouch. Despite Toto's revelation, Torage denied involvement, questioning the whereabouts of the suspected poison needle. However, Toto confessed they already knew Torage concealed the needle in his pen. When Ron requested an autograph, Torage struggled to write, due to the needle hidden in his pen. Eventually, Torage confessed to killing Lelouch as he was his accomplice and demanded to hand over 90% of the profits. Suddenly, Ron's condition shows Yuo affecting Torage. Fortunately, Toto intervened Torage to do the unthinkable. However, Toto got stabbed while stopping Torage. Upon examination, it was discovered that the signature was just smeared ink. Mofu's clumsiness caused Torage's pens to scatter revealing the hidden needle. Surprisingly, Mofu's actions accidentally saved Toto, as the real needle remained on the floor. Ron was deeply shocked when he realized he had nearly killed Toto. This made him doubt his ability to continue working as a detective. 
but Toto reminded him that by saving him, Ron showed he valued life greatly, which gave Ron more confidence. Toto promised to stay by Ron's side until he recovered from his illness. Then Toto gave Ron tickets to the planetarium. When Ron learned the event was on the island known for brown sugar, he felt better, which pleased Toto. Together, Toto, Ron, and Jumanji, the event organizer, went to the island. It turned out Jumanji knew about Toto and Kawasami. Jumanji's goal was to prevent a repeat of events from 10 years ago by inviting a skilled detective to oversee the event. Ron got excited hearing about the case, but he was torn between his vacation and the case. Seeing Ron's behavior, Jumanji became puzzled. When Ron and his friends arrived at the planetarium, they met Uno and other guests. Among them was a teacher from Blue and Idol. Ron then pushed the button to open the planetarium dome, revealing the sky view that amazed everyone. After that, they joined the buffet party, where Ron surprised Toto by pouring brown sugar over everything. But Onodera and the others were happy, especially considering Ron's deep knowledge of astronomy. Curious about Ron's past, Toto asked Grizzly, who then told them about Ron's time as a genius student who interned at Blue. At that time, Ron's dedication led to the capture of seven hardcore criminals. But a tragedy occurred when those criminals were killed by Ron. Because Ron lost his memory 30 minutes before and after the incident, Ron only lost his detective license. At that moment, Grizzly admitted he would have sentenced Ron to death if he were the judge, which connect Toto. Ori then informed Toto about Ron playing with a hula hoop when he was full, prompting Toto to scold Ron. After that, feeling sleepy, Ron chose to leave the party and rest in his room. Later, Toto and his friends admired the star's beautiful movements. Suddenly, they heard gunshots from the planetarium. Sadly, the door was locked, so they struggled to open it. Upon opening the door, they found Ron unconscious and on a day or lifeless, with a pistol near Ron's body and the only key in his hand. Shortly after, Ron, who didn't remember anything, considered himself a murderer. Moreover, from Grizzly's observations, Ron was undoubtedly the culprit. As Grizzly believed that the case from five years ago, similar to Onodera's death, where the victim was killed in a locked room, with only one entrance, was the same. Toto, however, believed Ron innocent but reluctantly handcuffed him due to lack of proof. Toto comforted Ron, reminding him he wouldn't harm an innocent. Ron then confessed he wasn't good at shooting, because shooting was the only lesson Ron couldn't pass. Instantly, Toto was annoyed at Ron, because he didn't mention that before. Learning of this, Toto was convinced there must be evidence to clear Ron's name. Continuing his investigation, Toto's words helped Ron regain clarity. Ron realized Toto's presence made a difference. Toto then checked the computer, hoping to find recordings of the murder incident. However, from the recordings between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., there was no sign of the murder event at all. Suddenly, someone was behind Toto, and it turned out to be Grizzly. At that time, Grizzly said it was the first time someone had defended Ron so much. Then Toto admitted Ron was his friend. Hearing this, Grizzly felt a change in Ron. Before, Ron kept to himself and nobody approached him. But now, Ron was different because he had a friend. Toto mentioned there were gunshot marks on each lamp. Also, Toto added that the telescope started working at 11 p.m. Before 1 a.m., it was very dark. After 1 a.m., only the North Star was visible. This matched with the open dome and gunfire sounds. However, the recording didn't show any evidence of the crime. Grizzly added that the room lights were shot out between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., making his observation room very dark. Considering this, Grizzly was sure Ron wasn't the killer. So, Grizzly asked Toto to remove Ron's handcuffs and explain everything to him. Finding the real culprit was crucial to prevent a tragedy like the one from 10 years ago. Grizzly warned Toto not to relax, especially with a typhoon hitting the island. They were trapped within the island. Shortly after, Toto removed Ron's handcuffs and explained the timing of the gunshots. Ron understood and was ready to share his deductions. He conveyed his message using a song, which made Toto scold him and Ron became sulky. After that, Ron started giving his statement seriously. In the planetarium, there were seven lamps, but only one gunshot was heard, suggesting the other six lamps were shot before 11 p.m. This means that last shards appeared at 11 p.m. At that time, Ron, who was unconscious, wasn't wearing shoes. If he walked in the dark, his feet would surely be hurt, but they weren't. Also, Onodera died when the gunshot was heard at 1 a.m. There was a telescope between Ron and Onodera, so Ron couldn't have shot her from his position. Ron also thanked Toto 
because his brain function increased to 2% thanks to him. Ron suggested he felt sleepy because someone put sleeping pills in the red syrup. If that's the case, the culprit might be Uno. But Ron thought others also had the chance to do it. Ron was eager to have fun and drink non-sleeping pill red syrup. Meanwhile, Grizzly found fishing line on the telescope, while Ron was happy to have more non-sleeping syrup, boosting his brain by 100%. Toto never realized Ron's thinking level depended on syrup. Ron explained that when he got tired, the culprit took him to the planetarium, but they had erased their tracks. At that moment, Ron asked what Grizzly had told Toto. Then Toto informed Ron that Grizzly apologized for holding him and would reinvestigate the case from five years ago, which suspected Ron as the murderer. Ron felt embarrassed and accidentally spilled his syrup. Suddenly, they both saw Grizzly get shot and fall down. After that, Ron and his friends rushed to check on him. Before he passed away, Grizzly said Ron was being framed. Ron then mentioned Grizzly was an instructor at the prestigious Blue Detective Academy, but dared to be killed by the culprit, indicating their enemy wasn't ordinary. Ron spoke to his teacher's corpse and found fishing line in Grizzly's hand. Shortly after, Jumanji and Donzo arrived, shocked to find Grizzly attacked and Ron free. Toto assured them Ron wasn't the culprit. Then Toto and Ron returned to investigate. Finding the door locked surprised Toto. Ron and Toto then discovered Onidera's position of death. Suddenly, Ron asked Toto to switch off the lights. At first, everything was dark, but gradually Toto could see the light switch, which opened the dome. Toto also realized that Onidera fell right on the control button. Toto remembered the dome was already open before the gunshot. Everyone had an alibi, and Toto felt dizzy, trying to figure out how the culprit escaped after the killing. When Toto saw Ron playing with a hula hoop, he got angry. Ron was using fishing line to play with the hula hoop, which turned out to be the key to solving the case. Shortly after, Ori came asking for a flashlight, fearing the lights might go out suddenly. When Ori asked Uno for the flashlight, Uno got angry, as it wasn't the first time people had asked. Ron then concluded his investigation with Ori's story and knew who the culprit was. Now, Ron asked Toto to be ready to present the deduction from the murder case on the island. Following Ron's direction, Toto presented his deduction. During the incident, Toto and his friends saw Grizzly fall. If they hadn't seen Grizzly's fall, they would have gone towards the gunshot sound. The culprit met them in the rain without an umbrella, having just killed Grizzly to cover their tracks. So, Jumanji was the murderer. However, Jumanji denied it and asked about Onidera's death too. Toto then explained that during the appreciation event, Jumanji pretended to go back to his room but actually followed Onidera. When the chance came, Jumanji drugged Onidera with sleeping pills and brought her to the planetarium. However, the dose wasn't as strong as the one given to Ron, so Onidera woke up. In the darkness, she tried the light switch, which was already broken. Then, she focused on the door, but it wouldn't open. She then went for the dome switch. At that moment, Jumanji had rigged a pistol in the ventilation system tied to fishing line. When Onidera turned the dome switch, it set off the pistol, shooting her. To frame Ron, Jumanji planted the toyed gun in a key. While everyone was occupied, Jumanji took the gun to kill Grizzly. Unable to deny it, Jumanji confessed why he killed Onidera. Because the videographer, who was actually a journalist, was busy solving the case from 10 years ago. At that time, Jumanji's father was still serving as director. He was the one who killed the seven guests and shot himself. All this time, Jumanji had been trying to cover up his family's shame, but Onidera kept digging. Instead of suspecting Ron, Grizzly delved deeper into Onidera's death. Reluctantly, Jumanji also killed Grizzly. Soon after, Ron's illness resurfaced, and it influenced Jumanji to shoot himself. Toto intervened to stop Jumanji, but he had already taken poison. Ron panicked, even though he's still having many questions. At that moment, Jumanji admitted he invited Ron to trap him, as he knew Ron couldn't escape. Since Jumanji was, Ron couldn't uncover more information. Shortly after, Authorides arrived to take away Grizzly's body and Ron's friends. Surprisingly, Jumanji was still alive and recounted Ron's attempt to kill him. A police officer, actually undercover as Winter Moriarty, shot Jumanji after getting the information he wanted about Ron. Winter called his brother Milo and mentioned meeting Ron for the first time. Unbeknownst to Winter, Ron was the sixth generation descendant of their enemy. Milo added that Ron was also the ninth descendant of Moriarty. Winter admitted giving a carving similar to Ron's wound, believing Ron would understand their true intentions eventually. 
Ron was born from the greatest detective Sherlock Holmes and the king of crime James Moriarty, making him a man with two remarkable lineages. Amamiya then told Toto that someone wanted to see him, and it was Chikori Monkey, a journalist. Chikori followed Toto to cover his detective story. Toto felt uneasy and invited Chikori for coffee, hoping to end the discussion about himself quickly. Unexpectedly at the coffee shop, Toto ran into Ron, who was working part-time. Learning Chikori was a crime journalist, Ron eagerly introduced his friend to her. Ron's friendliness made Chikori uncomfortable, as it disrupted her interview. Soon, customers named Tamada, Julie, and Hayami arrived. Julie seemed busy with her camera, capturing every moment. Hayami then brought Julie's latte, but as Julie drank it, she died instantly. Examination revealed that Julie was poisoned with cyanide. Following Ron's instructions, Toto then called for an ambulance and the police. Observing Ron's behavior, Chikori became upset. It should have been Toto that investigating the case. With Ron and his friends having solid alibis, Toto was puzzled about how the victim died and how the culprit knew which class Julie would choose. Ron then hinted at Julie's social media, allowing Toto to learn about her habits. Wanting to hear Ron's deduction, Toto diverted Chikori's attention and instructed her to hide all the kitchen knives. Toto then presented his deduction, with the culprit knew Julie's habit of wanting to appear perfect, so they marked the lat picture. Julie, who wanting perfection, chose the lat with an intact picture, which is why she chose the glass last. Thus, Hayami was the murderer, acting when she brought the latte to the table. Unable to deny it, Hayami could only cry. She killed Julie recklessly because she didn't want anyone to outshine her, and because Julie stole her boyfriend. When Ron's illness recurred, Hayami became hypnotized to do the unthinkable, but Toto intervened to prevent her death. After that, Ron and Chikori were grateful and admired Toto even more. Chikori felt fortunate to see Toto's personality and was surprised by Ron's excessive friendliness. This left Toto bewildered by his friend's silliness. Amamiya then assigned Toto to Aichi Prefecture to investigate Kawasami's decline, surprising Toto with Amamiya's eagerness for Kawasami's downfall. After that, Toto and Ron then went together to Aichi. Upon arrival, Toto and Ron went separate ways. Toto then met Kawasami, who seemed different. Since Yamane's arrest, Kawasami's performance had declined significantly. Kawasami invited Toto to buy souvenirs and they passed a road sign warning of crazy chameleons, which referred to criminals snatching phones and changing appearances to evade capture. Soon, a murder occurred nearby. While Kawasami examined the corpse, Toto chased the perpetrator. During the pursuit, the perpetrator attacked a woman, which Toto condemned. Shortly after, Toto arrived at a shopping area where the suspect was suspected to be hiding. At that time, he stopped everyone from leaving the store. Despite Kawasingi's attempts, he couldn't identify the suspect with his keen eyes, and he told the customers to go home. Shortly after, Ron arrived, mimicking Kawasami's style but using kitchen tongs instead of tweezers. Ron explained the murderer wasn't disguising but rather a victim lying. Ron revealed that the victims were fraudsters posing as students or insurance agents. With internal conflicts that led to them turning against each other and deleting call logs from stolen phones helped conceal their network. At that moment, Ron believed Kawasami would have uncovered these facts if his skills hadn't dulled, and he pledged to help restore Kawasami's reputation. It turns out, Yamane's imprisonment traumatized Kawasami and his high demands caused Yamane, striving for perfection, to make mistakes. However, Kawasami's own lack of firmness and discipline contributed to his decline. Thanks to Ron, Kawasami regained his sharpness, impressing Toto with Ron's ability to restore Kawasami's former glory. Afterward, Kawasami identified the murderer, believing they must have left their phone behind. After that, the officers found the perpetrator's red jacket, and Ron was sure they would return to retrieve their phone. Not long after, the perpetrator was caught trying to retrieve it from a mannequin, leading to their arrest. With Kawasami back on track, he noticed the officer's crooked tie and fixed it, showing his sharp, eagle-like gaze had returned, relieving the officer. Ron then instructed Toto to inform Speets that they would help find his missing brother. Upon realizing that Speets wasn't far away surprised Toto, they stopped by Ron's house, which looked different, confusing Toto. At that moment, Speets looked weary, which caught Toto's curiosity. Ron then explained Speets' anxious appearance, saying his demands were too burdensome. Ron offered to help if Speets would infiltrate Blue to retrieve the missing internship report. 
which Dr. Mofu said was related to Ron's mysterious illness. As part of Ron's memory disappeared during a bloody internship five years ago, coinciding with the onset of his strange disease. Strangely, the report on this was missing from police records. At that time, the police and Blue investigated the bloody internship, and it's possible Blue has a complete report. Ron insisted Speeds must fulfill this condition before helping find Speeds' brother, leading to a debate with Toto. Seeing Toto defending him and considering him a friend, Speeds agreed to do whatever Ron wanted. Suddenly, Ron asked his two friends to prepare for a trip to Yamanasi, to Yada village, where Speeds' brother vanished. Upon arrival, they saw residents in an uproar due to government plans to build a dam. Village chief Elric asked for calm and welcomed Speeds' group. Elric invited them to stay at his house since the cottage was taken by officials. At Elric's house, they met his daughter Mi. During dinner, Toto and his friends were startled by the sight of a person entwined with a snake. So Toto's gang rushed to the scene. However, there were no signs of anyone entering or leaving from there, which puzzled Toto's gang. The next morning, a government official's body was found. At that time, the villagers claimed he anchored the god Yadagami, but Ron disagreed. Hearing that, Speets was confused as no human evidence was found. With police found only Ron's sugar syrup. Suddenly a white snake suddenly appeared, made Speets believe in the Yadagami legend. As Toto and his friends looked out the window, the snake was gone. At that moment, Ron confirmed where the police found the sugar syrup, and their attention shifted to the floor. Ron signaled he found the culprit, pretending to be Toto, and declaring the detective would solve the case. Toto then gathered the villagers and revealed the truth about the government official's murderer. The human they saw entwined with the Yadagami, the night before was a painting. At that moment, the culprit tricked them into thinking the painting was alive. The tatami flipped to reveal the painting, propped up by stones and rope to appear real. Knowing this, they concluded Ulrich, a strong believer in Yadagami, committed the murder, although he denied it. However, Toto still confused about the snake. He then learned from Ron that Ulrich used temple ropes, not a snake, to strangle the victim. Unable to deny it, Ulrich confessed and Ron's illness recurred, startling Ulrich, but Toto snapped him out of it. Suddenly, the ground cracked beneath them, but a mysterious figure saved them. Afterwards, Ulrich and the Authorities departed the village, leaving me visibly saddened. Ron and Toto approached their savior and soon, Speets's brother named Shepard revealed himself. Shepard explained his disappearance, wanting to keep Speets out of trouble, due to his knowledge about a dangerous organization. However, he couldn't disclose its name to avoid endangering them. Since Shepard helped stop the dam construction, the villagers allowed him to hide. Unfortunately, the messenger discovered Shepard's location and blackmailed Ulrich. To protect Shepard, Ulrich committed the murder. After that, Shepard agreed to go to the police station with Toto. Ron clarified that Ulrich was protecting Shepard to spare Mi's feelings. Realizing Mi's affection for him and Shepard was moved. Ron and Toto then declared the case closed and refused to detain Shepard. Hearing this, Speets thanked his friends and proceeded with his mission to infiltrate Blue. However, he was apprehended by Blue's headmistress, Amy, who unexpectedly asked for his help in conveying a message to Ron. A few days later, Speeds met Ron to deliver Amy's message contained in a tablet. Ron then asked his friends to listen as Amy wanted to share information about the bloody internship. At that moment, traces of blood found five years ago didn't match Ron's or the seven murderers, but this data was erased from police and Blue reports. Afterwards, it was discovered that Ron had a wound on his neck, where the murderer's deadly disease was transmitted to him. This confirmed Ron's innocence in the bloody internship incident. Despite this, Amy couldn't defend Ron due to lack of evidence. The organization targeting Ron and the actual perpetrator of the bloody internship was the M family. With crime case has never been solved 100%, and every blue detective investigating the M family case died tragically. Upon hearing this, Toto panicked knowing the dangerous group was after Ron. Then, Ron continued reading Amy's message, revealing that Blue had been infiltrated by spies from the M family and Amy must be cautioned in her movements. She hoped Ron could gather evidence to clear himself and regain his detective license. Knowing this face, Ron, fueled by determination, vowed to investigate the bloody internship incident, with his friends ready to assist in his fight. Meanwhile, Winter expressed frustration over Ron not being eliminated yet. Milo realized Winter's lingering anger over Olise's death. However, Winter needed to understand that Ron was not just Sherlock Holmes' descendant, 
but also Moriarty's Milo's true aim was to prevent Ron from becoming a detective and potentially joining the M family. Hearing this, Winter understood Milo's desire to corrupt Ron's detective lineage. This destruction was Winter's revenge for Elise's death. Despite this, Winter vowed to make Ron's life miserable, and so the story comes to an end. Moral lesson from the story, when playing detective, always double-check if your syrup is sugar-free, or else you might end up solving mysteries while sleepwalking. And if a friend offers you brown sugar at a crime scene, just run because they might be a sugar-crazed detective in disguise.